Okay, this is the second in a series of videos where we're exploring when is a natural number expressible as the sum of two squares. And so uh, in this video, we'll be looking mostly at this proposition. So if P is a prime with P not congruent to 3 mod 4, then P is expressible as a sum of two squares. In other words, there exist natural numbers X and Y uh, such that X squared plus Y squared equals P. But before we do that, we need to we'll prove the following lemma, which says that if P is congruent to 1 mod 4, then there exists XY in the natural numbers such that X squared plus Y squared equals KP for some K between 0 and P. So let's do the proof of this lemma first. And now notice, uh, since P is congruent to 1 mod 4, we know that negative 1 is a quadratic residue modulo P. In other words, we could write that as a Legendre symbol equals 1, and then I'll put what that really means. So that means x squared congruent to negative 1 mod P has a solution. So that's what it means for negative one to be a quadratic residue mod P. So now from there we can do the following. So that means that uh, P divides X squared plus one, which tells us that uh, X squared plus one equals KP for some uh, natural number K. Okay, uh, but now notice we can just put a squared there, and now we have kp equals x squared plus 1 squared, and now we're almost there. Now we just need this inequality right here in order to finish the proof of this lemma, but that comes pretty easily. Notice we have kp is equal to x squared plus 1 squared, but uh, that's less than p over 2 squared plus 1 squared. And so how did I do that? Well, uh, by the theory of quadratic residues, we know uh, x is going to be a square root of minus 1 um, mod p, which means we can take uh, the solution that's uh, less than p over 2, because there are two solutions to this congruence. One is less than p over 2, and one is greater than p over 2, so we're taking one that's less. So again, we're using a little bit about quadratic residues here, which I'm not going over, but um, that's essentially the idea. Okay, fantastic, but now notice that's less than uh, p squared. But now notice we can just divide both sides of this inequality by P, and we end up with uh, K is less than P. And then we obviously know that uh, K is bigger than zero um, because uh, X squared plus one uh, can't be equal to zero as an integer. Okay, uh, so now we're done with the proof of the lemma. And now I'll clean up the board and we'll look at the proof of the proposition. Okay, so now let's look at the proof of this proposition. So uh, we're going to look at a very, very simple case first, and that is uh, the case when P equals 2. So really we have three types of primes. We have the number 2, which is by itself. Then we have those that are congruent to 1 mod 4 and those that are congruent to 3 mod 4. So we're looking at those that are not congruent to 3 mod 4, which means they are either just the number 2 or congruent to 1 mod 4. So let's look at P equals 2, but now notice that is just equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared. So uh, that satisfies the conclusion of this proposition, and we're good to go. So uh, case number 2 will be P is congruent to 1 mod 4. Great. But now, uh, by this lemma which we just proved, uh, we have uh, x squared plus y squared equals kp for some x and y natural numbers, and then the k goes between 0 and p over 2. So we know that has some sort of solution, right? And then uh, the next thing that we can do is take the number m to be the minimum of such k's that have a solution to this Diophantine equation. So we'll let m be that. So in other words, we have x squared plus y squared equals mp. 
and this m is the minimum uh, such number for which there is a solution to this. So obviously we want to show that this m is equal to 1 and that will get us towards the end. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that m is bigger than 1. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose m is strictly bigger than 1 and we're going to um, see what goes wrong. So now let's take a congruent to x mod m and b congruent to y mod m uh, such that we have the following inequality. So such that minus m over 2 is less than a and b, which is less than or equal to m over 2. So generally we take as our complete set of residues modulo m the numbers 0 to m minus 1, but really we can take any uh, list of m minus, sorry, of m incongruent integers, and this is uh, for sure a list of m uh, incongruent integers, so we'll take it from that range. Okay, good. So now I'll move this up to the top of the board and then we'll continue on with the proof. Okay, so in the proof of the proposition so far, we have the following. We have m is the minimal number such that x squared plus y squared equals mp has a solution. x and y are the numbers that go along with that solution. Then we set a and b congruent to x and y mod m, respectively. And then we've taken a and b so that they are between minus m over 2 and m over 2, including the m over 2 at the top. And now notice really quickly that a squared plus, sorry, a squared and b squared are both less than or equal to m squared over 4, just by simple arithmetic. Now the next thing that we want to notice is the following. If we take a squared plus b squared, so that is congruent mod m to x squared plus y squared by our definition of a and b, but that's also equal to mp, but that's also congruent to 0 mod m. Um, okay, great. So that means there exists some number n uh, such that a squared plus b squared equals m n. Okay, so why is that the case? Well, look at the extreme left and right hand side of this congruence. We have a squared plus b squared is congruent to zero mod m, which means m must divide a squared plus b squared, so we can write a squared plus b squared as a multiple of m. Okay, now the next thing that we wanna do is the following. We will multiply this and this, and so let's see what we get. We have a squared plus b squared times x squared plus y squared. But now notice that's going to give us the following. ax plus by squared plus ay minus bx squared. So if this formula looks like it came out of nowhere, well you can pause the video and multiply this out and multiply this out and see that they're exactly the same or you can look at the previous video in this series um, and you'll see a proof uh, where we essentially establish this formula. Okay, good. Now the next thing that we want to notice is that this product is equal to mn times mp, so that's equal to m squared times n times p. Okay, um, but now also notice we have the following. So since a and x are congruent mod m, and b and y are congruent mod m, that means that ax plus by is congruent to x squared plus y squared, which is congruent to 0 mod m. And then similarly, ay minus bx is congruent to xy minus yx, which is congruent to 0 mod m. So in other words, this expression and this expression are both congruent to 0 uh, mod m, which means uh, we can't, they are both multiples of m, which means we can uh, 
divide this entire equation uh, by m. We divide these parts and we're okay. So we get the following, ax plus by over m, the whole thing squared, plus a uh, y minus bx, the whole thing over m, the whole thing squared. So that's going to be equal to n times p. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to bring this equation up to the top, and then we're almost done to finish it off. Okay, so we're almost done. So let's recall we had x squared plus y squared equals mp. We constructed these numbers a and b that satisfy the following. a squared plus b squared equals mn. And then this uh, big expression, so ax plus by squared over m all squared plus ay minus bx over m the whole thing squared is equal to n times p. So uh, this one is so important that I'm going to say this is equation uh, star. And now let's notice the following. We have mn equals a squared plus b squared. Again, that was from our construction on the last board, but by this inequality up here, we have a squared and b squared are both less than or equal to m squared over 4, so that means that this is less than or equal to m squared over 2, um, which tells us we can divide both sides of this by m, and we'll get that n is less than m over 2, uh, sorry, less than or equal to m over 2, but that is strictly less than m. So, but recall, m was uh, minimal such that uh, ax um, plus by equals mp had some sort of solution. But star found a smaller solution to that. So star is a smaller example, which is a contradiction. And remember, what are we contradicting? We're contradicting the fact that m was strictly bigger than 1. So that means m has to be equal to 1.